Welcome to this week's Zoom call with Ecstatic Yoga. As you know, I'm Grace. I'm so happy to have you both here, Cindy and Tessa. Thank you so much for joining us. And we are going to be talking about the koshas, our energy sheaths, these sheaths or bodies that surround us, um, come going from the physical way out to the source, Anandamaya Kosha. So I'd like to begin with a little meditation. So if you can kindly and gently close your eyes and draw the attention inward. Taking a few breaths, deep breaths into the lower belly and allowing the parasympathetic nervous system to take over, be the predominant relaxation response to move through the entire body. And taking a moment now to bring your awareness to your Anamaya Kosha, your physical body. Noticing where the physical body is connected to the earth, acknowledging that support of the earth, supporting your body, and becoming aware of the entire body, 365 degrees all around the toes, the feet, the ankles shins and calves, the knees, the upper leg, quadricep, and your hamstring, your glute muscles, the pelvic area, the abdomen moving up, the ribs, the back of the ribs, the front of the ribs, the chest area, the scapula and back and the collarbones in front and the neck, the front and back of the neck, the shoulders, the arms, the upper arms, the elbows, the lower arms, wrists, hands, and all the fingers. And finally, bringing your awareness to the head, the jaw, the mouth, the nose, the eyes, the ears, the eyebrows, and that third eye right in the center of the eyebrows, and the skull, the front and the back, the skull. Just resting your awareness, noticing sensation in the physical body for another breath. Feeling the, and then acknowledging this Anamaya Kosha, this physical body in time and space, supported by the earth. And taking a nice deep breath as you move into the pranamaya kosha, the energy body. And beginning to bring your awareness to the more etheric systems of the body. The chakra system. The root chakra, the tip of the tailbone, the perineum area, pelvic floor. Navel chakra just below the belly button, sexual chakra. The solar plexus chakra just above the belly button. The heart chakra right in the center of your chest. The throat chakra, button back of the throat. Your third eye, right at the center of between the brows. That nice little spot between the brows and see if you can go right into the center of your head. 
where that pineal gland is and imagining that third eye pulsing right into the center of the head behind that brow, middle of your brows. And finally, that crown, very top of the head, the crown, one giant vortex of energy out the top. And at each chakra, these spinning discs moving out towards the front of your body and the back, one giant vortex spinning down from the root and one spinning up out the crown and breathing as you simply imagine this energy system healthy vibrant and strong and imagine the nadis now first the Shashumna Nadi, this giant, great river, vitality center that goes from the root chakra all up the spine and out the crown. And at the root chakra on the left is the Ida Nadi. And that's our more feminine moon yin nadi and that begins to spiral around the shashumna and the pingali on the right side of the root begins to spin around the shashumna moving up joining at each chakra charging that chakra bringing energy and vitality into the chakra and as it spirals up like a DNA helix, the Ida and Pingala Nadi, they bring vitality and charge and supercharge the Shashumna. They meet at every chakra and move up the third eye. And then the Ida and Pingala come down to the nose while the Shashumna continues to burst out the crown. The Ida comes to the left nostril and the Pingala on the right. And breathing into the belly. As you expand out further to an even more expansive kosha or etheric body called the Manomaya Kosha. This is the emotions and intellect. Allowing yourself to dive deeply into the emotional body. Feeling whatever is arising fully and completely, not pushing anything away. Without any judgment. You don't even need to describe the emotion. Just bask in the felt sense. And allow that emotional body to be acknowledged by your alert, aware intelligence. Breathing into the belly and allowing those emotions to pass through. And if you get stuck on an emotion, taking in a nice deep breath and as you exhale, letting it go. And allow yourself to be an empty, open space for whatever emotion arises next. Allowing the emotions to simply flow naturally and easily. And using the intellect. To let go of any thoughts that put you into any victim or pain cycles. Releasing them completely. And moving back into the felt sense. Pushing nothing away.
And moving now into our Vijnanamaya Kosha, intuition, intellect, soul, personality. And allowing ourselves to bring ourselves into a one point of focus. Bringing our focus onto the third eye. That point right between the brows and back into the center of our head. As you breathe and use this concentration. Using the intellect. Adding a mantra if you like. Focusing on the third eye. Not adding a single word mantra. Using the intellect to quiet the mind. Still the thought disturbances. So you can access the deeper intuition within you. Breathing into this one point of focus, one mantra, could be om or love or peace, whatever comes to you as you bring your awareness, resting it into the third eye. A couple more breaths, focusing on your third eye, repeating your mantra and breathing. Vijnanamaya Kosha. Deep breaths into the belly. And releasing that concentration and allowing yourself to rest in that intuitive, meditative flow of energy. Expanding into an even more expansive and deeper state of meditation. And allowing yourself to naturally, by grace, spontaneously, from this still and silent place in Vijnanamaya Kosha, allow your own intelligence to bring you into a Anandamaya Kosha, your Anandamaya Kosha, your bliss body, fully expanded, free. Everywhere, everything. Basking in your own expansive aliveness. Alert, awake, conscious awareness, fully expanded and free. Everywhere, everything. And taking a few deep breaths into the belly. We're going to move into a few three-part yogic breaths as we move back from our expanded 
most expanded kosha, the Anandamaya, Vijnanamaya, Manamaya, Pranamaya, and back into our Anamaya. So inhaling into the belly, the ribs, like a wave, into the chest, pausing at the top of the breath. And then exhaling the opposite, letting the chest come down, the ribs, and the belly finally coming in. Inhaling into the belly, the ribs, and the chest. Pause. Exhaling chest, ribs, and belly. And a couple more breaths on your own. Allowing yourself to maintain that glow from the An Ananda Maya Kosha and integrating that gentle glow, that expansiveness into the physical body so you can be simultaneously expanded and present in the body. Feeling energy, a ball of energy, almost like a rock in the pelvic area, grounding you down into the earth, supporting you, allowing a deep sense of safety and security in all the bodies, allowing the breath to integrate to its natural rhythm and its natural flow, maintaining that glow, Gently and kindly coming back. And when you're ready, taking your time, allowing the breath to come back to normal and yourself. And when you're ready, just share any comments or any questions um, or experiences that you may want to share from this kosher meditation. felt a lot of heat sort of like when we do reiki um especially like my heart like solar plexus and then my hands mm. it was really interesting i don't know if that's normal but it was just like i think it was getting that kundalini you know that in that prama you know that prana life force energy movie yeah don't don't look for normal in when we're talking about our etheric bodies and such but all of that is very normal and then Everyone is so different. So, you know, whatever you experience is your experience and really honor that as a sacred experience. There, and most of the experiences are, are uh, you know, a little on the boundary lets of, of, you know, the five senses. So we're moving into more um, subtle senses and subtle bodies. I felt a Thank lot of energy from my third eye like I feel like it's po it's pulsing right now and I also felt a burst of energy from my crown chakra and then I can also feel like within my brain when I do the meditations that there's certain things unlocking like there's a certain connectedness that's that's happening that um, there's new wiring going on that's what I felt during this meditation Wow. Well, thank you. Thank you, Tessa. Thank you. Sandy. Beautiful. These are beautiful things. And, and you're both getting so sensitive to your bodies that you're noticing these powerful, subtle sen sensations um, that are moving through you. So this is a really great thing to create that, that um, deeper, um, this more, more sensitive skill that you're sensing into your body. That's beautiful. I wanted to go over the koshas a little bit. I know there was a class, I think it was week five, 
um, where we talked about the koshas, um, but I, I haven't done a little Zoom class on it. And I love the koshas. I love the energy bodies. I, I love the physical systems, but I also love the energy systems. And part of yoga is these energy systems. And the koshas is a really powerful um, energy system in our body. And it is, I use it a lot to help people come, go into samadhi. Um, guiding them through the koshas, also through the um, the last six of the eight limbs, Patanjali's eight limbs. We go from asana, which is the third, and then pranayama, which is the fourth, and then we go into um, pratyahara, and we keep going through the limbs, but they kind of mirror, even though there's six and there's only five of the koshas. So I kind of combine them a lot, and I use both of them and some just a little more focus on one or the other. So it's a, both of them are really powerful ways to help you and to help students, you to guide students into deeper states um, and expand out into more etheric, their more etheric bodies. And the thing I love about the koshas is, um, let me go through them first and tell you. So there's the Anamaya kosha, which is the physical body. It's also associated with food. And then there is the pranamaya kosha. And I'm going to send you the link to this lesson, even though it was week five. I'm going to send it so you don't need to take notes unless you want. You can just absorb if you want. And I'll also send you this link to this Zoom. So, Thank Ma you. Yeah. Manamaya kosha is the emotional body, mental and emotional. Vijnanamaya kosha is the wisdom body. It's intuition, intellect, and personality. Anandamaya kosha is the bliss body. Joy, contentment, the heart. And what I love about these, what I was about to say is um, a lot of the Indian saints will say that, you know, the Anamaya kosha is a physical body. And that is our physical body. That's that sheath. Um, kosha means sheath or envelope or body or cover. Um, and so it's a layer of our being. And interesting thing about it is the um, layers will go, uh, they'll be more expansive, but they go more expanded out and in. Because there's a lot of the philosophy that there really is nothing outside of us, really. Um, so they're also going deeper in. We're, when we go out and expand out into this Anandamaya kosha, this bliss body, we're also expanding deep within. And so as we expand out, we have to expand in as well. So we're equally going in and out at the same time. <laughs> it's not a little crazy. But the saints, the Indian saints, one of them, what they say is, even if awesome. someone passes or crosses over to the other side and, you know, they disconnect from their physical body, they still have those other four bodies in perfect tact. So they still have their pranamaya kosha, the energy body, the prana body, that vital life force energy. It's all those energy systems. They're still alive in that pranamaya kosha. And the same with the Manamaya Kosha, the emotional body is still alive and well. And they're also alive in their wisdom body. And then, of course, their bliss body, which is, you know, one with source. So that's exciting because, you know, having John who has crossed over to the other side and my mother and loved ones, it's nice to know that we may not be able to be with them in the physical, but we can be with them in all those other aspects. And of course, we also may be with them in other dimensions, other paradigms, other realities as well. So any questions about that? No, I, I love that. Well, they even have proven scientifically that energy never, energy never dies. It's still there. It still exists, you know, so that makes sense scientifically too, you know. Yes. Sharing that. Yes. Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. And the, you know, there's, there's even proof that other dimensions and parallel universes exist now and so many things that they're coming out with. So it all makes so much sense. 
Yeah. And this is why I'm, I'm always kind of on the cutting edge. You know, when I was, before I could even drive a car, I was riding my bike to a bookstore and went to the metaphysical and reading, you know, quantum physics stuff. So, I mean, all this stuff that's a little outside the five senses and the norm is very fascinating to me. <clears throat> and so the coaches have also been described as the five levels of awareness that lead to the discovery of the innermost and the most expanded Anandamaya Kosha or true self. And so the true self, our true identity is um, what else would we want to seek more of our, but our truest and more authentic self. And so um and as we move through these layers of awareness and these koshas, we get closer and closer, more connected to that indweller, that atman, that inner guru, that divine true self. Um, and when all our koshas are healthy, vibrant, and balanced, all aspects of our being are healthy, vibrant, and balanced. And this is one thing that I've talked about in other classes and stuff is that our health really begins more in our prana bodies and our pratyahara and our more expanded koshas. And um, so if we can really work on keeping those bodies healthy, our physical body is naturally going to be healthy. And a lot of times when the physical body is unhealthy, something has gone off balance in some of the energy bodies. So bringing the energy bodies back to balance. And that's what Sally does with... Um, with the acu acupuncture is brings those meridians and those energy bodies back into balance and into vitality and flow. And that has a direct, um, a direct um, uh, overall on the, the physical body. We got Phil coming in now. Hello, welcome, Phil. <clears throat> welcome to the class. Glad you're here. I'm so sorry. I spaced it. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. We're just getting into the koshas. We just actually just began. And then we okay. did a little kosha meditation. And now I'm just going over some of the koshas. And and then um, I'm wanting to have some conversation. So, um, okay. so the last thing I want to say before we get into each of the koshas a little bit more into detail is... Um, is Let's see here. Practicing yoga and yogic philosophy is a powerful and direct way to harmonize and balance the koshas. And ecstatic yoga samadhi practice takes us through the journey of the koshas while honoring Patanjali's eightfold paths that I was mentioning earlier and activating the chakra system. The Upanishads believe that the practice of yoga and meditation when integrating the koshas would bring the individual deeper into the self, thereby closer to the true divine self, Atman or bliss body. So any questions or comments on some of this information? I didn't go through all of it, but on the general um, about the koshas. Um, and then I think it was on week six when you when you talked about it, you also talked about the different exercises and foods and things that would help to keep them balanced. And I really, 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 really like that. So I'm going to be trying to practice all of that. <laughs> this okay, year yeah. when I'm also doing my yoga. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'll go into some of the physical that were the connections and the five elements and some of the ayurvedic doshas but um that would be the physical i don't know about the foods i don't remember that that was the whole other lesson and i've forgotten it no I, I, I just remember you saying also you know put, putting healthy food in your body and the meditating the asanas you know mm -hmm. the, like doing all the different things to help to keep those balanced and, and how the crossover with the, like you said, the yoga limbs with the koshas, it was just really cool. Okay. So. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for remembering that and paying attention. That's, that's great. I, I tell you, sometimes I, that's why I love these discussions because I often learn more from, from uh, you than, than you might learn from me. <laughs> 
So any I other comments or questions <laughs> before we go into each individual kosha? Okay, I'll go into the koshas. So the first one is the Anamaya kosha, the outermost kosha that feeds and brings life to the physical material body. And it includes all the physical systems, the, the five elements of nature, the Ayurvedic doshas, um, the Anamaya kosha or sheath is also called the en envelope consisting of food. So, of course, the physical systems, the muscular, digestive, endocrine, lymphatic, the um, respiratory, nervous, all the minor systems of the body. Uh, this Anamaya Kosha also includes the five elements of nature, wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. And it includes the Ayurvedic doshas. And um, in Ayurvedic, all the elements of the universe combine and express within each human being as three characteristic humors or doshas. And the three doshas, and we, and you can be a mixture of, of some. I'm a mix of vada pitta, so you, we can be mixes. Vada is ether and air. Pitta is fire and water. And kapha is water and earth. And every human has a unique combination of all three doshas, often with one dosha that is more dominant than the others. And we'll probably, I'm hoping to go through a whole Ayurvedic class, but I'm not an expert on it, so I'd rather have an expert do that. Um, and then we'll move on to the pranamaya kosha, the pranic or energy body. So this is the sheath that is consists, can, contains all the energy systems, the bioenergetic field surrounding that infuses and surrounds the physical material body with life force energy. And that includes the pranavayas, the chakra system, the nadis, the meridians, um, the, what out the, Koshas, the, the Sanskrit trans, translation of the Pranamaya Kosha or sheath is the envelope consisting of life force energy. And the Manamaya Kosha, which is lower mind and emotional body, is the energetic field of manas or lower mind, stimulus response mind that includes our habitual thought patterns and our emotions. The Sanskrit translation of the Manamaya Kosha, or sheath, is the envelope consisting of mind. The Vijnanamaya Kosha, the intellect or wisdom body, this is the sheath of the higher mind, also referred to as the Buddha. This is the mind of intuition, discrimination, and wisdom. It involves witness consciousness and present moment awareness. The Sanskrit translation of the Vijnanamaya Kosha or sheath is the envelope consisting of intelligence. And the Anandamaya Kosha, the joy, and bliss body, the energetic field through which the individual connects to ultimate reality, Atman, true self, divine self, the God of your understanding. This state is naturally blissful and one experience a state of, can experience a state of pure euphoria. The Sanskrit translation of the Anandamaya Kosha or sheath is the envelope consisting of bliss. So any questions on those five koshas and those definitions and how that might relate to all of you? Well, I'm in this thing for the Anandamaya Kosha. 
(laughs) (laughs) And Samadhi uh, is also a nice uh, end result with all of this. So yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoy delving into this in ways that allow my consciousness to expand and allow me to step into it. It's, I think, you know, for all of us, it's a very natural thing. And what we're doing, what I'm doing is just removing the blocks and barriers to what comes very naturally without those blocks and barriers. So, um, yeah, so appreciate you doing what you do and sharing this with us. Yeah, and thank you for that connection, Phil, with the samadhi and the Anandamaya Kosha. So when you are in a state of samadhi, most likely you're out and expanded in your Anandamaya Kosha. So this mm-hmm. is why I overlap the eight limbs, Patanjali's eight limbs with the koshas. Um, and I usually do Dhyarana and Dhyana, put them both in Vijnanamaya Kosha. And I think I have a handout for that, how I combine the two. I actually created it when I was in yoga school years and years ago. And um, I love, I've always combined them since. So that ultimate goal of yoga as samadhi and then the koshas is, you know, you're it, when you're in the Anandamaya kosha, you're probably in a samadhi. And when you're in sama, the state of samadhi, you're expanded out into your Anandamaya bliss bond. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Any other questions or observations or comments? I love it when you all share your wisdom. Thanks for all your wisdom, Bonnie, Grace. I appreciate you. We're just, we're just, really diving in and trying to really process all this food. It's amazing. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Cindy. Let me finish close. It will probably end early because um, I'm going to close with a couple things here. Okay, so in yoga, the five koshas go inward from the Anamaya Kosha, the physical, to the outer, which is the outermost sheath, to the Anandamaya Kosha, the bliss body, or the innermost sheath or layer. However, as we go inward, each Kosha also, also, its roots are found more and more deeply within the being. They expand further away. I explained this already, but let's see. For example, the Pranamaya Kosha begins deeper within the body than the Anamaya Kosha yet it is more expansive and expands beyond the physical body. And the Anandamaya Kosha is the innermost Kosha, yet expands infinitely beyond the physical body and physicality as a whole. And then um, yoga being to yoke, this is all about getting into that Anandamaya Kosha where we experience that state of pure oneness. We experience ourselves as not our physical body, but an expanded intelligence, an expanded intelligent awareness that is everywhere and is one with all things, all that is. And all the Koshas are manifestations of that unity. And then Brahman. Brahman is the ultimate reality beyond all appearances and underlying all phenomena. In yoga, they talk about Brahman as the self that is pure extension of all ultimate source, creator, existence, consciousness, bliss, that which is unchanging, eternal, and omnipresent. Any questions on that or comments? And sharing of your wisdom. So you, so it's like similar to samadhi, then just the interconnectedness, going back to source with all things, where you can um, connect yourself and realize that you're of that and manifest from that space. Thank you. So beautifully said. Thank you, Tessa. Thank you. This is beautiful, beautiful information. And I'm just honored to even be a part of this. Thank you so much.
Now we're honored to have you a part of it, all of you. Thank you so much, Grace. We love you. Yeah, I love you. Any other comments or questions on the koshas? And I will send you a link to this lesson. I know it was in week six. Um, and I think I was going to do a Zoom call and it didn't work. And so now we're kind of catching up on that. And I, I just don't want to forget to have a nice discussion on the koshas because I use them a lot. And you will too, as you guide people through samadhi. It's a really powerful way to guide people um, more easily from the dense physical body out into the more etheric states by using those yogic philosophies rather than just, um, you know, we're using the yoga to guide people into these states of samadhi and basking in that Ananda Maya Kosha. What would you say would be your favorite ways to help people get into samadhi through the breathwork techniques and or the yoga techniques? For me with samadhi, I like to combine the, the koshas and the eight limbs. So I start with the Anandamaya kosha, which is the asana, physical body. And then um, when we get into the pranamaya kosha, um, which is pranayama in the eight limbs, and that you can see the kind of, you know, parallel, so they're so connected. Um, that's when I would use some breath work. And as you go taking somebody into samadhi, you'd want to definitely use calming breath work. You wouldn't want to do a revitalizing breath work because you're, you're wanting to move them now out of the physical body and into a more of, a, of an etheric energy uh, awareness. And then, then you go into pratyahara and I'm com I combine pratyahara and manamaya kosha. So you'll be going into inner sensations, withdrawing from the outer world, going deeper in, noticing the inner aliveness, and also diving into that emotional landscape, because monomai is that emotional. And using that mind, the lower mind, um, being aware of the lower mind, pulling you into pain cycles or victim cycles or conversations that will take you out of the felt sense. So you're in that monomaya kosha using the lower mind to keep you into that landscape of inner sensation and emotion into the felt sense, not the thinking body. And then you move, we move from monomaya kosha's vision on maya kosha. So I'll use that, but I'll also use the eightfold path, inviting them to use dhyana and dhyarana, both the um, single pointed focus and then meditation. So now you're out into your wisdom body, your vision on a Maya Kosha by using the Eightfold Path, concentration and meditation. And then Samadhi and Ananda Maya Kosha are always by grace. It's always by grace. You just rest in that expanded, uninterrupted flow of meditation. You stay in that deep state and you just allow Samadhi and Ananda Maya Kosha to just to just um, take you. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. Yeah. So that's that's how I do it. I, that's how I use the overlap of the eight limbs and the koshas to use the yogic philosophies to guide people into that state. And I, I feel it's an honoring of yoga. And it's, it's for me, it's been um, just a, a really nice, gentle way to bring them Instead of, you know, it's hard to go from the physical body way out to expanded awareness. So taking them through this natural flow of their koshas is just natural, is more natural. And they'll, it'll be gently and easier It'll in guiding them through with your voice and allowing them to move out into that Ananda Maya and Samadhi, um, taking it kind of up the stairway, up the steps, one step at a time. Instead of asking them to just, you know, go from the physical body and jump up into samadhi, <laughs> it's a little difficult, especially after, you know, you've had a busy day or you have things on your mind and the obligations and a to-do list. So it helps people to step-by-step um, -step move into that state. I love that. Thank you so much.
Mm, great question. Thank you. Thank you for that guidance, Grace. Appreciate you. Yeah, I appreciate you all. And um, any other questions or comments before we can end this class a little early? Yeah, I got one. Is there a, a way to take a shortcut with the Ananda Kosha and uh, Samadhi by maybe getting some earth medicines like psilocybin and ayahuasca in there? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not very familiar with either of those, um, but... Honestly, you can, you before. Yes, but I'm not familiar with using those to get into um, yeah, okay. that, that ayahuasca experience. <laughs> that was the last. <laughs> I know that was something else. I know. <laughs> you need but, to do mushrooms instead, Grace. They're much more sweet, <laughs> subtle. Yeah, sweet I mean, I think it's all beautiful <laughs> and it's all wonderful, and but eventually you have to do it naturally. You have to. Th those are kind mm. of touches and you can get there and it, it is a beautiful way to kind of expedite it but it's it's even more beautiful when you can get there naturally and the good thing is is um you can you can shortcut it um sometimes and when i used to teach cindy party members when i used to teach at salt lake center for spiritual living on Monday, oh, those were yummy classes I used, yeah. no, it was friday mornings i used to take people in between each each one i would take them straight into samadhi you know we just and you had this massage, so I was already relaxed. So I got to the bliss stage pretty fast. <laughs> yeah. So maybe what I'll do is I'll do that. And I've done it in a few of the asanas uh, where I've taken you right there, really, you know, pretty quick, not a long, it's not a long samadhi meditation, but a, I call them mini samadhi experiences um, where I'll, I'll just guide you right there pretty quick. And um, we move through the koshas really quick and the eight limbs and there we are. We're in that state of everything, nothing, everywhere, nowhere. And that silent, awake, still, fully expanded state of awareness. So it's very possible to do it very quickly, too. With or without. My only, comment on, my only comment on my comment was it was an expression of the ego mind to want to know a shortcut. I was really more kidding than anything else. I'm <laughs> not interested in following any kind of artificial means to attain that. Well, and shortcuts are okay if that helps us to eventually get to doing it naturally and everyone has their path. And it looks like that trinket is in bliss. She's oh, yeah. in her bliss body for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she hears this my dog today doing yoga with me. It was so funny. They were doing the yin restorative with me. Yeah, and my, my big fat lab kept putting her like head on my face every time I would do something. Oh. She was like, pay attention to me. <laughs> of course. So as far as shortcuts go, I think shortcuts are an illusion. I, I don't think that, you know, with what we're talking about, that there's an effective way to move into it unless we allow. And ultimately, it's grace. Like you were saying, I believe that. You know that it's a it's a gift that we have to be open to receiving. Yeah, when I first go, started going into samadhis, they were just totally spontaneous. It would be after a yoga class, and then I'd be like out into expanded awareness, sitting in the middle of the yoga class for a couple hours, and heard the second yoga class come in, and um, just and it just started happening. And I'd usually put myself on the very side because it started happening so often, and I didn't even know what it was. Um, but I'd had those experiences as a child, which I called fr freezes. And so it was very similar when, when the mind gets just something grips you into this state of expansion and alert awareness and your body freezes. And it's a nice ride to, to, to enjoy and to experience and to trust that your higher self is bringing you there. Um, your the divine of your understanding, or however you want to, you know, put something higher than your own conscious mind. And um, I am sure there's beautiful things happening, and in, things integrating, and downloads occurring. And we just don't know; we can't see it, but it's a beautiful state to uh, attain to and to practice, uh, especially if you're a yogi, like you all are. Thank you, Grace. Appreciate you. Love you.
Thank you. I can't wait to have you put me in my Samadhi state again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love and appreciate you all so much. And thanks for being on this call in this class. And thank you. Thank you for taking your time, Grace. If you have any questions, I'm always here to answer questions and clarify anything you need. Um, yeah. And our next in-person immersion, we'll have Tessa and um, we'll have uh, Taylor for sure do their practicum. Are you, do you have any questions on that, Tessa, or any support you need? Um, I will definitely message you um, when I'm uh, available later or tomorrow with some questions that I have. Okay, yeah. We're here to support you. So anything you need, um, I know that's a little nervous for everybody that practicum, but we're here to support you. And Aww, you can, you. And I know you're going to do great. Aww, thank you. Just like you're Cindy did, just like Phil did. You're going to do awesome. Oh, you guys are so sweet. Thank you. Love you all so much. Love you, Tess. Love, Love you all. all. Have a wonderful evening and namaste. 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 Thank you for being here. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.